for a long time now. He's 30 these days. He won a bronze all the way back in 2013 at the American Championship, silver at Rio, bronze in Hamburg in 2017, a silver at the Pan Am Games in 2019. Hasn't medaled in a major tournament since then. Boxed in Russia two years ago at the World Championships, but didn't really go his way. Quad finalist in Tokyo. Boxed a lot of WSB as well. This is Zianis Solotsik. Who beat Siago Tanaka of Japan in his previous fight on a split 3-2. Tanaka beat Martinez in Tokyo, actually, in the quarterfinals. Martinez's fight in the competition so far against Kieran McDonald of England. And he turned that one around too because McDonald had a good first round. Won that first round, but Martinez came back into it, did some damaging work with body shots and got it by unanimous decision. So it's an interesting matchup this because Solutskik is he's an unknown at this at this level. But that was a real good performance to beat Tanaka in his last fight. It was an upset, big upset. Very fresh faced, isn't he? 21 years old, he does not look 21. So here we go, Martinez of Colombia in the red. So let's kick off Belarus in the blue. The Belarusian, a, a southpaw, the Colombian, an orthodox fighter. He's always had a tremendous engine, Martinez. That's what you've always noticed when you watch him. Just can just go and go and go and set a high tempo and keep it up. Right to the body there. Mainly going up to the head at the minute, Solotsky and finding it difficult to, to slide a glove through. Martinez went up top originally, then looked for the body, and the body is on offer there for Solotsky because he holds those gloves quite high. The elbows flare a long way away from the from the rib cage as well when you look at him there. Have a look at him when he next tries to tuck up. He's done it better there, actually. Just drops the elbows, but there, when he throws to the head, Martinez, those gloves come right up. So he can throw to the head Martinez, then go down to the body, and it's and it's on almost every time. Did it just then. <laughs> Left to the body there from Solotsky, who tucks up well there, that was good. But the punch output from Martinez is so relentless, three punches in a row there into the midriff. The referee asked him to keep the punches up, I thought they were okay, there didn't seem to be anything wrong with them to me. Right into the body again there and after a, for him, quite a, a sedate start, he's really, he's really picking it up here, which is what he does. but they're well-picked, well-placed punches. It's just a relentless output. It's not a blur of hands, but it is just, it's a conveyor belt of accurate work that is gonna hit you somewhere. It doesn't miss with anything. It might not get through clean, it might hit gloves, or it might hit forearms, it might hit your shoulder, it might hit your hip sometimes, if he's trying a little bit low, but it's hitting something. Just always keeps you occupied. It's very, very difficult to make him miss. And he can do that all day, all day long. So difficult for Solotsky. That's a Martinez round. I don't think there's any doubt about that.
There we go, 10 nines across the board. I like watching Martinez, I always have, just because of that, that style of his. Difficult man to beat, very difficult. So into the second round, Martinez of Colombia in the red, Solotsky of Belarus in the blue. And Martinez just picks up exactly where he left off. So lots of kick, he's got to try and get that jab working. It, when he's up close there, that's no good. That's not going to work for him. He's got to try and use that jab, that one-two, and see if he can keep Martinez on the outside. But Martinez just pulling the feet back as much as he needed to there, making Solotskik fall short. That's a good left hand. That's more like it. Throws the left hand there, Solotskik, but his weight tends to come in behind it a little bit. So he follows it in, and then all of a sudden he's in that kind of Martinez threshing zone if you want where those hands just start thudding into you good example that of what I was just talking about throws a left hand weight comes forward so even if he does land it the likelihood is that he's going to get one back Right to the body again there from Martinez. I'm picking some holes in Solotskik here, I know. and He's a young fighter, he's an inexperienced fighter, particularly at this level, but I'm only doing it because he's up against a fighter like, like Martinez and it just kind of highlights the difficulties of fighting someone like him. He's, he's right up there. He is elite level and has been for a long time. left hand there from Martinez who's just standing off a little bit more now rather than working up close relentlessly he's just increased that gap a little bit but we'll just step in let those hands go then then step off kind of gave Solotsky a, a working over in the first round just doing things slightly differently in the second but it's still working he's still winning the fight he's still winning the round Two rounds to nil for Martinez. And that is a mouth-watering quarter-final we've got in prospect between Martinez and Vibasinov. Really is. As I said. Well, as I've been saying, haven't said it for a while actually, no seeding in this year's World Championships. It would have been impossible to have seeding because they'd redraw on the weight categories to go up to 13 weight divisions, which is the most that the World Championships has, has ever had. It's had 12 on, on occasion, had 11 until relatively recently, then went down to 10 to come into line with the, with the Olympic weights when they were 10. But now 13, so there's no form guide to go off to give anyone in rankings or seeding so it was impossible to do that's how come we ended up with a fight like Hassan by Dusmatov up against Saken Vibasinov in the in the opening round or, although having said that because Dusmatov hadn't boxed in Aiba competition for such a long time there was no way really that he could have 
bin rack so that's not actually <laughs> a great example but you, you get my meaning we've had some some big hitters come up against each other early on Stuck with this a lot, Skick. Trying to cover up there again. Took a pretty good job of it. Throwing that left hand. One thing he does have to he does have to sort out is when he throws that left hand, his, his weight comes forward. Sometimes you see his back foot just come off the canvas. It's a decent left hand. He's he's caught Martinez with it a couple of times, but the problem with it is is that because of the way he throws it, his weight will always come forward and he can't get his weight back. So even if he lands it. As I said, the chances are he's going to get counted or he's going to find himself stuck in kind of no man's land. Whereas you see a fighter like Bibasinov in the previous fight, did it again there, did it there, through the left hand, back foot comes off the canvas, forward he comes. Martinez has stepped off on that occasion, so he wasn't made to pay for it. But someone like Bibasinov has just got that great balance, weight, in the middle of those feet, throws the one-two. If it's not quite going to get there, doesn't chase it in, and he can pull that weight back straight away. Because that's what he's looking for. He's always looking for that left hand. So for Slotsky, his his greatest strength is also a it's also a bit of a weakness. That's quite quite normal, actually. Quite typical across lots of sports the thing that brings you the most profit sometimes can bring you a reasonable amount of loss bit of blood coming out of the end of the nose there so the doctor just going to wipe that off 39 seconds remaining He's had a good competition, Solotsky. I know he's only had two fights, but they've been against real high-quality opposition. Against Sayago Tanaka of Japan, who medalled at the Olympic Games. And against Yubichin Martinez, who was actually knocked out of the Olympics by the aforementioned Tanaka. So there's a lot to be positive about. Tianis, it's a lot of and, he, and he toughed that out because it is tough fighting Martinez. It really is. And as I say, we've got that quarterfinal between him and Bibasino to look forward to now. And, and, and that really is a great fight. And he's going to go through by unanimous decision here. 3-0 on all three judges' scorecards. I don't think there's any doubt about that whatsoever. Ladies and gentlemen, Rick B brings about 396 to his ball. Put your judges ruling in favor of your winner by points. Declared by unanimous decision to the red corner from Colombia. It's your pitcher, Rodriguez Viva. There's a 10 8 in there, in, uh, a 10 8 in there from Canada. A couple of other. Two ten eights from Zimbabwe. 